to have a mind where you can control your thought and your emotion is incredible. You know? Without speaking about getting spiritual realization, just to be able to say stop to the thought when you want, to say stop to the emotion when you want, you know, to have that capacity to be master of your own mind, you know, to be able to say, all oh, these thoughts stop, you know, these emotions stop, now I have enough of you. And to be, whenever you want, you can stay still, you know. So to have this capacity is an incredible, you know, peace of mind, an incredible advantage, you know. You, suddenly you become master of your own mind. If you want to develop any qualities of mind, you need some mindfulness, some continuity in what meditation you do, you know. For example, you meditate on love. If your mind of meditating on love get constantly interrupted by other thoughts, you know, there's no way that you will have a, the ability to develop a strong love. You know? Same thing if you meditate about the nature of reality, you know, how things really exist. You know, if you have this inquiring mind which follows a stream of thought and wants to reach a conclusion and stay on it, you have to have had a concentrated mind which is able to follow the analysis without being distracted. And once you reach a conclusion, to look at it and, and see what it implies. You know, you, you must be able to stay on the conclusion of your analysis and see what it implies, how to change your whole worldview, you know, based on that conclusion you have reached. So in order for that to function, again, you need to have a, a calm mind. No? If you have more we have control over our mind, you know. What happens is that instead of going constantly up and down like a yo yo, you know, being overly excited when something good happens and completely depressed when things go wrong, you know, our usual mind, you know. So with concentration, your mind becomes much more even. Th that evenness of mind actually is a type of joy, a type of peace, which is so pleasant, much more pleasant actually than, than even the excitement of pleasure. You know, to have this still inside you know, is much more pleasant than having good news and good things happening out there. With time, we see that what we call pleasure, excitement, actually is a form of suffering, you know. It's, it's not real happiness, it's excitement, and it's like boiling water, you know. There's no peace, no serenity in what we call pleasure, you know. But this we see by, by practicing. So that's why I think effort put into concentration, into developing karma body, I think is very important. And we can do that in everyday life. It doesn't need necessarily to go into retreat to do that. You, know, you just know how to go about it and, how to, and you have to know how to integrate it into your everyday life. In order to develop calm abiding, there are certain conditions you know, which help. So all these conditions we can gather in our everyday life. You know. We don't need necessarily to go to a complete isolated place. It just means having little desire, be content with one's life situation, you know, and have a little bit of peaceful environment. You know. So even though one might have a family life, still we can wake up an earlier before everybody else and do some calm abiding then, you know, or at the evening when everybody's at bed, or when the children are at school or something like that. One can find a place, a time in a day, you know, if one wants it for a peaceful meditation. So, the first is to have, you see, wishing to do the meditation, you know, by seeing its advantage, then developing the determination, I'm going to do it, and for such amount of time, I'm not going to lose the object, you know, and then is to develop the mindfulness of holding the object without losing it, and once you're able to do that, then you use introspection to check the quality of your concentration. And then, to make it more precise, you know, if you are prone to dullness, then you, you hold the object more intensely. 
if you have too much excitement, you, you lose, you know, you relax a little bit the grip on your object, you know. And like that, slowly you find the middle way, you know, and you're able to hold on to it. So that's a little bit the process, how one goes about it. And by doing that, you know, one goes through nine stages. Just in brief, I will go a little bit over that.